What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Kia Seltos S all-wheel drive. Huge thank you to Kevin Shin over at Safford Brown Kia of Manassas, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Seltos or any Kia product, I'll be sure to have Kevin's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, we got some pretty heavy rain headed our way. Should be here in the next hour or so. So I'm going to try to get this part of the video done relatively quickly while still giving you all the necessary information you want. So like usual, first, I'm going to talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Kia Seltos S all-wheel drive. And this particular one has been painted in the optional $395 Snow White Pearl exterior paint. A couple things that I wanted to preface this video with is basically by saying for 2024, the Seltos got refreshed exterior looks and lighting elements. You also get new wheel options and a new dual screen panoramic display on the inside, which I'll show you later on in today's video. But as standard with the Seltos S, you get halogen projector beam headlights with high beam assist, as well as LED daytime running lights, standard turn signals, and halogen fog lights. But now, Taking a step back and to the left, let's take in the entire front end of this vehicle. So you can see, this is what the 2024 Seltos looks like. So at the center of your front end, I don't know if I pointed this out, but you do have your Kia logo at the top center of your front bumper in like that brushed aluminum type of color. And then coming down just a little bit more, you get a gloss black front grille with a satin chrome grille surround. And then coming down just a little bit more, you get a satin black lower grille, which is what this area is right here. And one thing that I kind of found interesting um, is that on the Kia website, you see this silver piece down here? Kia calls this your silver skid plate. I'm gonna give it uh, a skid plate like this uh, because I don't consider that a skid plate. I consider a skid plate actually made out of metal, whereas you may be able to tell this one is made out of plastic. That truck over there looks sick. I love uh, older. I think that's a Ford. Anyways, uh, sidetracked a little bit. Last thing I wanted to say is that you get 7.3 inches of ground clearance with this vehicle, which is plenty for a vehicle like this. By the way, that truck also sounds really, really good as well. Sorry, I am a squirrel, my brain is small, and I get distracted by little things like that. But anyways, coming over to here, you also get a gloss black fog light surround on both sides. You also get a side marker light right here, and then you get satin black wheel arch moldings. And what I wanted to mention while I was here, because why not? Um, again, this vehicle has been optioned with all-wheel drive, and all-wheel drive is a $1,500 option. And with the all-wheel drive option, you get torque vectoring and a center locking, like differential kind of thing. It's kind of like a transfer case, locking differential. Anyways, uh, moving on from there. These are the standard and the only wheels you can get with the S, and they are a 17-inch dark gray finish wheel wrapped in 21555 Kumo Solus TA31 Plus tires. Here's a closer look at your wheel design. And then I'll show you the tread pattern on these tires here real quick as well. They're just an all season tire. You know, they all pretty much look the same, but coming up just a little bit, one design trait that I do like about these Seltos is that you do get gloss black A-pillars, which is very nice. This is the A-pillar for those who don't know. Again, this is painted in gloss black and it really just, you know, adds to the design of this vehicle because it's, if you tinted out these windows, right? It would almost be like a two-tone type of, type of design because then all of this area would be blacked out and then you get the white on the top and the white on the bottom. So that is just a nice little design cue that I personally appreciate. Some of you may not like that, but I do like that. Uh, and then also with the Seltos S, you get body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, power adjustable, manual folding, and you will find your blind spot monitoring on the upper left-hand side of your driver's side mirror and on the upper right-hand side of your passenger side mirror over on that side. Now let's do a little side profile shot of the Seltos. That is what it looks like here on the side. Now, starting up here at the top, you get a mix of satin chrome and satin black for your roof rail. So you may be able to tell at the top, you get the satin chrome. At the bottom, you get the satin black. And one thing that I kind of like about these roof rails is that it almost looks like a little spoiler on the back of your roof rail. Uh, you know, some of you may not see that, but I kind of see that. And I kind of do like that little touch where this piece is not connected to anything. Kind of looks cool. 
Anyways, uh, my opinions out of the way. You also get some satin chrome window trim as well as body color door handles with keyless access. Just keep in mind, the keyless access function is only on your front two doors. The rear two doors do not get the keyless access function. And then coming down all the way to the bottom of your passenger doors, you get this satin black door cladding. And this is what I'm referring to here. And then your rocker moldings are also satin black, which lead nicely into your satin black wheel arch moldings. Now, coming down the side, if you wanted to open up your fuel door, you do have to go into the interior and pull up on this thing right here. When you pull up on that, that gives you access into your fuel door, but you do not get a capless filler neck, so you still have to twist that off down in there. Moving on from there, now here's a little rear three-quarter shot of this thing. You can see the taillights are new for 2023. I'll get into that here in a second, but I'm jumping the gun a little bit because you do get a body color shark fin antenna up top here. You also get a body color roof spoiler. You get some gloss black trim right here. And then as standard with this vehicle, you get LED combination tail lights. I did want to mention uh, that you also have your third brake light up top there. You get a rear window defroster. You have your rear wiper right here. And then you can see at the center of your taillights, you have your Kia logo. Again, that's like that brushed aluminum type of color. Uh, and again, one thing I really like about this is that you have the LED taillights that come all the way to right here. So it's like they're almost connecting. Very, very cool. Actually, I think they are connecting. I could be uh, totally wrong on that. I'm pretty sure they are connecting. Anyway, I showed you what it looked like on screen just a little bit ago. Um, but yeah, moving on from there. Down here, you have your backup camera. You also get uh, satin chrome badging here on your lift gate with your Seltos badging and your 4X badging over there. You also do get a manual lift gate. It actually lets you know where the lift gate button is right here. It's basically just to the right of your backup camera right here, but you do have to pull up on it. Again, this is a manual lift gate. You do not get a power lift gate with this vehicle. And then uh, decent amount of storage space in here in the trunk space, considering the size of this SUV. And then if you lifted this up, that is where you'll find your temporary spare tire, your jack, your tow hook, and all the necessities to change your uh, tire if you end up do getting a flat tire. And then also around the spare tire, there is a little bit of storage space that you could set some other things like jumper cables and stuff like that. But other than that, um, you also do get fold flat second row seats. So if you pulled up on that, and you threw that seat forward, then I'll show you this. You also uh, get some more fold flat storage space. Let me push that out of the way. As you can see, these fold flat, and then you get probably another four feet of storage space with the second row seats down. So folding that back up and closing this door here. Let's finish, th let's finish things off here at the back end. So closing that right back up. A couple things that I wanted to mention is that coming down just a little bit, you get a satin black rear bumper as well as part of your bumper up top here is gloss black. And then there and there, those are your reverse lights. You also get two reflectors on each side. You get beautiful little doggies over there. And then you get a reflector here. You get a reflector there. And just like the front, which is kind of interesting to me, they also call this a silver rear skid plate, but it's not a skid plate. So I don't know why Kia calls it a skid plate uh, because it's just another plastic trim piece so i'd call that a silver plastic trim piece kia calls it skid plates both front and rear and that kind of about does it for the exterior of the seltos now i'm going to walk you guys around it give you a little 360 shot of this thing so you can you know take this thing in in all of its glory uh, and let me know what you think of the design of the 2024 seltos in the comments down below i think it is one of the better looking mid-size suvs on the market Honestly, it kind of up here at least reminds me of like the Chevy Trailblazer. Uh, if you see that kind of same thing, especially here at the lighting area, let me know in the comments down below. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Pop and open that hood reveals that two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder that makes 146 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. It is mated to an intelligent variable transmission for a zero to 60 time in 9.6 seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 27 miles per gallon in the city, 31 miles per gallon on the highway for 29 miles per gallon combined with all wheel drive. This vehicle does come standard with front wheel drive. So if you did want all wheel drive, that will run you an additional 1500 bucks, but it does include torque vectoring, a center lock and heated front seats. One thing I found kind of interesting with the all wheel drive is that it does include the heated front seats. That's kind of like, you know, comes out of left field. You know, you get the torque vectoring, you get the center locking diff, 
but then you also get heated front seats on top of that, which honestly is a win, especially if you live in a colder climate area. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. I just hit 20,000 subscribers. So thank you all so much for supporting me, supporting the channel. I genuinely do appreciate it. And I just wanted to say thank you. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, press on this black button right here and the vehicle will unlock. You can press that very same button again and the vehicle will lock. Now the vehicle is locked. Two beeps is unlocked, one beep is locked. Now I wanna walk you through a couple of the functions on your key fob, starting from the top. You have your lock function, you have your unlock function, you have your panic function, and then you have your remote start function right here. If you wanted to remote start the vehicle, you press this lock button and then press and hold on this button here and it will start up. And that is what it sounds like when it fires up here from the outside. Now, let's take a look at the interior, but we're gonna start with the driver's side door panel. But I did wanna mention that with the Seltos S, um, you get this black cloth slash Syntex interior. Um, so basically, you get the cloth, the Syntex is basically like a synthetic leather. Now, starting on the driver's side door panel, up here at the top, you get some satin black plastic. Um, right here, you get some vinyl wrapping. Then you get some gloss black trim. You get some satin trim. Uh, you get a satin chrome looking door handle. You have a speaker up top here. You have your power side view mirror controls. You're unlocking your lock functions. You get an automatic down driver window, uh, but it does not go automatically up. And then all of your other windows are not automatic up or down. That button right there is gonna restrict your passenger window privileges. You get a sin Syntex wrapped armrest that is nicely padded with some accent colored stitching. Um, that is how you close the door. Some miscellaneous storage space down here. And then you get like this 3D speaker. So I'm not sure if it's gonna pick up. Okay, it does pick up on camera. So you can see um, a bunch of different angles and stuff here with this speaker. It looks pretty cool. So speaker here, speaker up top there. You get a manually adjustable driver's seat, a manually adjustable front passenger seat. Again, you get the mix of the cloth going down the center of the seat. And then on the sides of the seat, you get that Syntex material, again, the synthetic leather. And then you also get the Syntex material for your headrests as well. Uh, really the only, well, there are only two options uh, on this vehicle, but the only option in, uh, here on the interior is includes the $175 carpeted floor mats. They say Seltos on them. Um, again, that is the only option here on the interior with this vehicle. Now, stepping on into the interior, if you wanted to start up the vehicle, key fob has to be in the interior. Push your foot down on the brake and then push to start. And that is what it sounds like and it looks like when this vehicle fires up. So now I'm gonna close that back up and I'm gonna walk you throughout the interior. So coming down here, if you lift up on this, this is going to pop open your fuel door. Coming over to here, this is to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. This is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. That is to turn your traction control system on or off. Flipping this thing down gives you access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So you can bring the steering wheel towards you. You can push the steering wheel away from you. And then you can also bring the steering wheel up and down until you find your comfortable position. Once you find your comfortable position, you push it back up and you lock it into place. But now let's take a listen to our turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. And not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your headlight control stock, your um, high beam control stock, and your fog light control stock. So right now, the headlights are in the always on position. That is parking lights on. That is headlights in the automatic position. And then that is headlights off. And then that's fog lights off. That is fog lights on. Uh, and then again, this does have high beam assist, which is your automatic high beams. Um, so if you just flip it forward, that is basically high beam or automatic high beams on. Now, zooming back out, you do get a leather wrapped steering wheel. Uh, and then just like any other vehicle, you have your horn and your airbag at the center. So let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like on this vehicle. You get some gloss black trim down here as well, some gloss black trim up top here as well. Now I might as well walk you throughout the different controls here on the steering wheel. So over here, this is to speak to the vehicle. You see this mode button right here. When you click on that mode button and this button down here, basically these are like two configurable buttons. So right now I click the mode button 
It's gonna bring me into this screen uh, on the infotainment system, you know, when this vehicle is brand new and you have not selected what you want that mode button to do yet. So basically, when you click on that mode button, you can, can choose from any of these options here. Uh, and when you click that mode button, it's gonna bring you directly into, let's say, USB music. It will bring you directly into Bluetooth audio. It will bring you directly into sounds of nature. So you can select any of these options um, and once you check like let's say FM right so I have FM selected now every time that I click mode it's gonna bring me into my FM stuff um, so does that make sense this does the same thing except when you click on this you get different options so now uh, this again this has not been configured yet because this is a brand new vehicle so right now you can see it says none but basically if I click that button I can select from any of these options and it will bring me directly into let's say privacy mode it will bring me directly into rejecting a phone call uh, or uh, change my hands-free calling device or go to the home screen or it will bring me into my maps my reroute cancel route it will bring you into any of these different options again you can only choose one but any of these options here on the screen that is what that button does and then this is your volume control uh, I wouldn't I was gonna say knob but this is your volume controls uh, and then if you flip up on that that is to go backwards on a track which is interesting and then if you flip down on that that will go forwards on a track very interesting so like going up is backwards going uh, down is forward so it's kind of counterintuitive at least you know how I would expect it to be uh, and then if I click on this phone button right here that's gonna bring me into my phone stuff here on my infotainment system uh, and then oh well I guess I already mentioned this on the exterior but again this entire display screen uh, is new for 2024 so both of these screens are 10.25 inches so basically they call this like a dual screen panoramic display but really um, the screen ends like right here for this screen and then the screen ends like right there for that screen so they are two different screens basically just mounted on the same uh, backing plate I guess you could say so basically you get a 10.25 inch digital gauge cluster and then you get a 10.25 inch infotainment system with built-in navigation and wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android auto connectivity um, but again I'm gonna get into that here in a second but I just wanted to point that out coming over to here um, you have your cruise control settings so this 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 and this all of these are your cruise control settings um, and then see this okay thing and these two buttons here are to control your 10.25 inch uh, digital gauge cluster so one more thing this is your windshield wiper control stock for your front windshield wipers and your rear wiper but now let's go throughout our gauge cluster so right now on the left you have your speedometer then you also have your uh, fuel gauge down here your fuel range is down there then you have your tachometer on this side you have your coolant temperature gauge and your odometer over here this is your instant fuel economy stuff this is basically like your average fuel economy for right now ambient exterior temperature and all of this here at the center uh, you can change that is your transmission status stuff if you wanted to go out between these different screens uh, basically you'd click this button right here and now this is your drive info I can click down on this it's gonna bring me into since refueling accumulated information some auto stop information and then your digital speedometer readout clicking on this one more time is bringing me into my next screen which is my compass and then I have this information. So this screen, you can see these four boxes here. Again, this is all wheel drive. So basically when I accelerate, it's gonna show me which wheels are accelerating. So let's say I floored this vehicle, right? All of this stuff is going to be shaded in, uh, but I give it 50% throttle. You know, let's say I've given it 50% throttle and it's using more of the front wheel power than the rear wheel power. Uh, it's gonna highlight, let's say three bars up here on the front and then like one or two bars here on the bottom. So it's basically showing you um, which wheels are powering the vehicle forward and stuff and then you have your tire pressure stuff clicking on this button again then you have your um driving assistant stuff personally for me this is the screen that i would leave the infotainment system on up top here you get some satin black plastic speaker up top there and then coming back down to uh here you have your push button start button this is your 10.25 inch infotainment system i already went through that but i wanted to show you this is basically your home screen so basically you have your date your time the music that's playing and then you have basically like your subtle navigation stuff on this side of the screen if you wanted to go to the next screen you just swipe over and then this brings you into like your driver profile stuff and then um, you have your home button up top here so let's say you go into your phone stuff that is your home button it's always going to bring you into your home screen clicking on that thing right there is going to either turn the display off you can edit the home icons you can go into the user manual with the qr code so basically it's going to pop up a qr code here on the screen you scan that with your phone and that will bring you into your um, owner's manual 
Then you have your time, you have the date. Yeah, it's letting me know that I am connected to Bluetooth audio. And then this is again, your home screen. You can see all of your different icons there. I'm only gonna highlight a few. So this is gonna pop up your navigation map. This is going to pop up your point of interest stuff. Um, and then phone projection, you have wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. So it's telling you, you gotta use a USB cable to use that. You can also bring your climate control stuff uh, on this screen as well. Coming back down, um, one thing that's kind of interesting is that you have your HD radio stuff. You can see the traffic. Um, you can also see um, the Doppler radar. So one thing that's interesting though, is that I, it's not gonna let me move it to like where I actually am. Like this is all I can see and I'm not anywhere near uh, that area, but you can see right down there, you get a little band of rain. It's light rain though. Um, or is that heavy? No, that's light rain. We come back over to here, you get your media stuff, your setup. This is your second screen. You get your key connect, your owner's manual or your notifications. And that's kind of about it for this screen. One thing I did want to show you though, is let's say you wanted to go into your setup, right? And you wanted to, you know, find, let's say like your driver assistance features, but you didn't know where to look. Uh, basically you would click right here. And all you gotta do is type in like driver assistance stuff and it's gonna bring you into your driver assistance settings. So very, very cool, very, very easy to use. It's a very intuitive system. Um, so I like that. I like easy to use systems. Coming down, you get two HVAC vents. You have your hazard button right here. You get single zone climate control with this vehicle. And this is what your climate control stack looks like down here. Uh, temperature controls towards the driver side, fan speed controls over here on the passenger side. And then that is what the screen looks like when it is on. And then you have an instant off button, which I definitely like. Another thing that I do like uh, is that you do get your physical uh, knobs here for your tuning and your volume knobs. This is your volume knob. This is your tuning knob. And then you have all of these physical buttons down here. Uh, so basically this will bring you into your uh, point of interest stuff. This is going to bring you into your radio stuff, um, which I don't want to get a... Um, copyright strike then you can go into your setup menu you can go into your media stuff this is another configurable button so you can see that one is not shaded in but this one is shaded in basically telling you that these are two different buttons so this does the same thing as these two buttons so basically you can uh, configure that button to your liking and you can choose from any of these options here so anytime you click that button it can bring you into your phone it can bring you into your driver assistant settings again you can choose from any of these things but you can only choose one of them and that is about it for what we got going on down here. Coming down just a little bit more, you get a 12 volt power outlet, you get a USB A port, you get a USB C port. Here's a closer view of that. Then you get a little bit of storage space down in here. This is your drive mode selector. Let's see if you can see that. So you can switch between your different drive modes. You have normal, you have sport, and you have smart. So that's smart, normal, and sport. Uh, sport is kind of cool because it gives you some red accents and stuff. It looks sporty. You get some like faux carbon fiber trim here. Uh, that's pretty cool. But right now I'm just going to leave it in normal mode. Again, with the all wheel drive system selected, you get heated front seats. So you get heated front seats with three levels of adjustability with all wheel drive. You also get this center lock button here with all wheel drive as well. It's supposed to basically like lock the transfer case kind of in a way and make it, you know, a little bit better off road and stuff like that. That is what the center lock button does. And then clicking on this is going to pop up your backup camera. You only get a backup camera with this vehicle. You get the guidance lines there as well. Um, you also get hill descent control and this is your hill descent control on or off. They call it downhill brake control. Uh, that is hill descent control. Then you get your emergency brake here. It is a handbrake then you get two cup holders you get a nicely padded armrest opening up your armrest you don't get any connectivity down in here but i would say you probably get about you know six to eight inches of depth down in there for you know whatever you need to set uh, just be mindful of setting stuff in here because it will shrink quickly um, and then your dash right here is basically gloss black but then you get this pattern over here that i'm not sure if it's going to pick up you know on camera um but yeah, it kind of picks up on camera right there. Very subtle pattern. Coming down, you do not get a lockable glove box, but you get a good amount of storage space in your glove box. Right now, your owner's manual and all that kind of stuff is down in there. And you can see you get a little bit of extra space. You can set some napkins, some straws, maybe some snacks. Um, but yeah, that's it for the glove box, by the way. The glove box is illuminated. Coming over to here, you have your rear view mirror. Um, this is what your rear view mirror looks like. Coming back up to here, you get your Kia Connect stuff, roadside assistance stuff. This lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. Driver gets a light, passenger gets a light. This is basically your instant dome light on button. If you wanted to turn these lights on individually, you just tap them, 
and then they turn on. It's kind of like a touch screen light, pretty cool. Instant dome light on button. And then that is basically whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the doors. Taking a look at our visor, you get a vanity mirror, but you do not get a vanity light. Then you get a spot right here, you can set any small paper product. Opening up your visor this way, they do not slide. Interesting, I was would have expected them to slide. So these are fixed in positions. Again, they do not slide forwards or backwards. Then your Opu panel over here for the driver, Opu panel over there for the front passenger as well. And now I want to highlight a couple things um, that you get as standard with this vehicle. So as standard, you get a leather wrapped steering wheel and shift knob. Um, you also get remote start. One thing I did meant, uh, miss uh, is that if you wanted to, you know, control the transmission, basically you'd go into drive and you flip that over to the left and then you pull down to downshift and you push up to upshift. I missed over that and now I wanted to mention that. Uh, but to go over a couple other things, you also get a six speaker sound system. You get blind spot monitoring, you get driver attention warning, you get a forward collision avoidance assistant. You also get lane keep assist as well as lane following assist. You also get lane departure warning, rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist as well as a couple other things. But now I'm just gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. And you can take a look at whatever you wanna take a look at. Um, you can take a look at the two options that this vehicle has, which is the carpeted floor mats and the uh, exterior paint color. But basically, I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Seltos S all-wheel drive is spec is $28,385. Let me know what you think of that price in the comment section down below but I do want to show you what we got going on in these rear seats before moving into the driving portion. So stepping back here, this is what the door panel looks like here at the back. Again, you do not get automatic up or down windows here at the back, but that is as far as the window down here or in the back goes down. Some miscellaneous storage space back here. You get a speaker, you get a padded armrest, you get a spot, maybe you could set a phone. This is what your rear seats look like. They are cloth, and then you get the Syntex, uh, you know, um, accenting, I guess you would say. That's the word that, you know, I can think of off the top of my head. Now, stepping on into these second row seats, you can see you do not get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat, but you, uh, okay, you do not get one behind the passenger seat either. Then, Opu panel, a spot you could set your dry cleaning. Two HVAC vents two USB-C ports, a spot you could set your phone down in here while your phone is charging with those USB-C ports. And then coming over to here, you get a center fold down armrest with two cup holders. It is a nicely padded armrest, very nice for my elbow. And then up top here, you have your two LED dome lights. You get an Opu panel on this side, but you do not get a spot you could set your dry cleaning. However, you do get a spot you can set your dry cleaning on this side. So um, a couple other things that I wanted to mention, basically headroom, I've got plenty of headroom, I'm five foot nine, uh, and I am adjusted behind myself, by the way. I still have plenty of knee and leg room. I'll give you another view of my knee and leg room. There you go, plenty of knee and leg room. So I'm comfortable sitting behind myself, but that kind of about does it for the interior and the exterior part of the video. So we've talked about the interior, we've talked about the exterior, and we've talked about the performance. So now I wanna see what this thing's like to drive, as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So. I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now onto the driving portion. Take a listen. So I know on paper, it doesn't seem like it has very much power, um, but here in person, it accelerates way better than you would expect 146 horsepower to accelerate like. So I want to do one more little acceleration going back the other way uh, and I'm going to floor it and you're going to see that it actually feels quicker when you're just giving it about mid throttle than it would be, you know, if you're flooring it uh, because this is mostly, you know, tuned for mid range power. Now I'm just going to floor it. still decently quick like I don't feel like it's slow like it doesn't like I've driven other SUVs with like 180 horsepower 190 horsepower and you know they obviously they do weigh more but they feel a lot slower than this and you know this is a light-ish vehicle um, I don't know the exact weight I can put it on screen right now though but it is relatively quick 
for having the power level that it has. It's a lot quicker than you would expect it to feel. I know it said 9.6 seconds from zero to 60, um, but it's really, it's not slow. It doesn't feel slow to me. And we're just gonna do like a 50% throttle acceleration here. So I know this has the um, intelligent variable transmission, which is probably the same thing as a CVT, but it feels better than a lot of other traditional CVTs that I've driven because it actually like shifts. It's got those fake shifts, uh, but it feels almost like an automatic because of those fake shifts. And I know a lot of people in my comments, they don't like the fake shifts. They just, they'd rather have it be a CVT, but really in the grand scheme of things, they'd rather it be an automatic. Um, but I, I actually do like this because it puts it back into the power band um, and it does it quickly, which is good. Now, uh, brake wise, it's got good brakes. Um, you know, uh, acceleration wise, it's, it's honestly, it surprised me. Uh, it's a lot better acceleration wise than I expected it to be. Um, here's another little one, just regular. See what I'm saying? Like it climbs up to speed, like, pretty quickly considering what this vehicle is. So I appreciate that, um, you know, again, with the power level that you see on paper, it ex you'd expect it to be slow like a turtle, but it is not. It is actually relatively quick. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'd be happy with the power level as it, for this as my daily driver. Uh, you know, when you get on the highway, obviously it's gonna be slower because it's at higher speed. Um, but around town, you know, acceleration, stoplight to stoplight, I don't think there's anything wrong with the power level that it has now. A couple other things. Speaking of the infotainment system, into, infotainment system is very intuitive. Uh, it's very easy to use in my personal opinion. Um, I also think that the suspension is pretty good on this as well. It's not too firm, but it's not too um, floaty. You know what I mean? So it's like kind of, I would say it's leans more firm than it does floaty. Let's say 50, that's a Durango Hellcat. Let's say 50% right is in the middle of firm and floaty. I would say that this leans more firm than it does floaty but it's like a good thing because it makes it handle better, uh, but it still goes over bumps really well as well. So uh, no complaints when it comes to the suspension. The sound system is pretty decent as well, considering it's just the standard sound system. Um, it's got uh, good volume to it. The bass is pretty good as well. Clarity is pretty good, uh, but don't expect it to be as good as like a Bose sound system or, or something like that, you know what I'm saying? But power level wise, you can see it just, brings me right up to speed very very well um, this thing's pretty efficient one thing though is you know kind of interesting to me is that the highway and the city figure are relatively similar you know they're only four mpgs apart um, which I would have you know liked to see this thing get maybe you know 35 maybe 36 miles per gallon on the highway um, rather than 31 but 31 is still plenty great you know my daily gets like literally 20 um, so 30 31 i'd be happy with um other than that you know it's just a great vehicle you know it doesn't have all the thing like all the frills and all that kind of stuff like a 360 camera system adaptive cruise control and all that kind of stuff um but it's got everything that you need it just it doesn't have the things that you don't necessarily need if that makes sense so this Again, I think it's very nicely equipped for those of you who are on a budget. You don't want or need, you know, wireless Apple CarPlay. You don't need a 360 degree view camera system. You don't need adaptive cruise control and all those extras um, that are definitely nice to have, but you don't need them. Uh, that is, this is kind of the trim level for you because it's got everything you want or it's got everything that you need. It just doesn't have everything that you would want or maybe it does have everything you want depending on the person, you know, uh, all of that stuff is subjective, but very, very nice vehicle for the money in my personal opinion. But that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. Uh, I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos, so I'd really appreciate it. If you guys would just take a second, give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment in the comment section down below. The likes and comments look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that helps me grow my channel. So. I would really appreciate it. Again, thank you all so much for 20,000 subscribers. That is awesome. Uh, and now we're a fifth of the way to 100. So again, that's it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.